My name is Cornelius Kasisi from Kenya. I've been working with bees for the last 20 years. So I'm here to present to you, to demonstrate to you how beekeeping is carried out in Uganda, in Adra Agricultural College. The most important things when you are beginning beekeeping, you have to make sure that you have the right materials, you have the equipment, you have the knowledge and skills. Then apart from having the knowledge, the skills, the equipment, the other important aspect is that you have to make sure also that uh, you have the equipment such as the beehive that's just in front of me. It doesn't matter the type of beehive that you have. Any beekeeper can use any type of beehive. Bees can store honey in any container as long as it's clean. The most important thing here is that to make sure that the management level of your bees are well taken care of. Beekeeping is very important in our lives. One of the major important things is that about 75% of our crops are pollinated by, the, by, uh, by bees. Besides pollination, bees also provide us with quite a range of bee products. They really can fetch quite a lot of income to our beekeepers and earn significant uh, income. I'm going to show you, first of all, how to get started working with bees. One, the beekeeping equipment is necessary when you are working with bees or when you want to get started with bees. Number two, also make sure that there is available bee forage around the area. If your area is not rich in bee forage, don't be of, of ambitious to keep lots of beehives or bees when you don't have enough food for them. A place where bees are kept and well managed is known as an apiary. So choosing a suitable site is very important for a beekeeper. Always select a site that has enough bee forage that will provide food to your bees. Now bees can be kept in an open area where there is plenty of bee forage or you can build a bee house such as this one. A bee house is very important for a beekeeper, especially for small scale farmers. So no one can actually excuse himself or herself that I cannot keep bees because my piece of land is too small. From the trials that we have carried out, we have realized that bees inside the hive or when they are kept inside the hive, they tend to be a little bit calm. The other important thing when you are using the bee house is that you can even enter the bee house when it's raining or during the day, check on your bees, look at the behavior and record lots of things and you'll get to learn so many things about beekeeping. So choosing a suitable site is very important for you. So like, for example, you see this house has provided a very cool environment for the bees. So the bees will not spend a lot of time, will not use a lot of energy going to a further distance to collect bee forage when you have established your apiary like an area like this where there is plenty of bee forage around them. I am Gula George from Bee House. Uh, Bee House is located in Intinda. We provide consultancy and trainings in beekeeping. Uh, we do process honey and other bee products. We supply bee equipment ranging from processing equipment, harvesting equipment, and we also make beehives. We have different types of beehives. The Kenya top bar hive that you can see and uh, the Langstroth hive. So this is uh, a Kenya top bar hive. is a standard hive that we make from hardwood. Uh, we have a local species of the hardwood that is called the Kuzanyana, which is very good in making long-lasting beehive. Uh, it can also be, uh, if in case one doesn't get that species, you can use another local 
hardwood called movule or musizi. Those are the best uh, in making the, this kind of hive. It can last for about 10 to 15 years if well handled. Uh, uh, most of our farmers hang the bees, the, the beehive up, but uh, we, we are encouraging the farmers to actually put the hives on the stands. The metallic stand can as well last for more than 10 years, so that can be uh, really durable. Uh, with a KTB hive that we supply, we actually put wax. We put wax to attract the bees to enter into this hive. It, uh, it becomes easier for this hive to colonize once uh, you placed the, the, the wax, because the smell of wax will attract the bees so fast to, to colonize. Um, we actually we, we make a cover for the KTB hive and this cover has to be slightly tight so that we, we avoid uh, we avoid pests from entering the the hive and also this uh, this cover has to be tight to avoid falling off uh, falling off from the hive when when there are heavy rains the bees enter from here these are the entrances and usually uh, we, we would prefer you put at least six or seven holes uh, once the bees discover that there are so many holes they will cover some and they will use a few of the holes but uh, you're supposed to uh, put these entrances so that the bees don't pass from up once they pass up then uh, there's inside it becomes a bit disorganized the way they, they, they put the combs because it's a sequency the way the, the, the bees lay the combs so you have to put the entrances from one side and not both sides yeah with this ktb hive you actually harvest two times a year and uh, inside the ktb hive when you're harvesting you don't actually start from the from the entrance because the entrance that's is where the queen is so you can easily damage the queen or kill the queen so what happens as the bees enter the first uh, three to four uh, top birds you actually that's where the queen is so that's where the queen stays so after the queen you you will find another sequence of the eggs so the queen lays eggs the next swarms will, will be having eggs and then after the eggs you you'll find uh, uh, the the bee bread the bee food then from the bee food you'll get the honey so the honey will come last so when you're harvesting you start from behind you actually smoke after smoking the bees then you come and start checking from behind uh, the other way of finding out whether there is honey in this hive you would actually hit on the hive if it has a dumb sound then you can tell that there is there's some honey if, uh, so that is uh, with this kind of hive and uh, the other type of hive is uh, the Langstroth hive. Now this this is a, one of the most modern hives that we have and it was invented by Langstroth in UK. So that's the technology that we are using. And uh, with this hive you have the brood chamber which is the lower chamber, this one. And then you have the deep super which is the honey chamber so in the brood chamber uh, this is where you find the queen and the brood and the eggs so <clears throat> the queen will lay eggs down here and the, all the young bees will be here so up the worker bees oh, there is um, there is this wire mesh that separates the queen from going up the honey chamber so it is the queen is restricted to the brood chamber and the, it's only the workers 
that can go through uh, this wire mesh to actually store honey in this uh, this chamber. So this chamber you only get honey, nothing else. You only get honey. Uh, you don't get the young ones, the eggs, you can't get them up. So when you're sighting this hive, usually it is recommended that you you sight the brood chamber first only. And you first keep the, the deep super, or this upper chamber, you first keep it aside. So when you sight, you make sure you sight only the brood chamber, like this. You put the cover, and that's it. So the bees will easily uh, colonize the brood chamber because uh, it is smaller compared to the big, uh, uh, the, the big space that the lungs stop would be happy. So here the, the bees can easily control the temperatures within a smaller hive as compared to something big. That's why this colonizes faster uh, as compared to if you had two uh, chambers sighted at the same time. When there are bees in the brood chamber, you get your deep super and insert, insert it on the brood chamber like that then you cover. So the first harvest will come after six months. So after the first harvest, you then uh, open, you smoke the entrance, so the bees go in, uh, then you smoke around the hive. After smoking around the hive, then you, you get off the cover, which you put here, and then you smoke on the frames. So when you smoke on the frames, the worker bees will run from this chamber to the lower chamber. So, so you can easily carry the, the deep super and take to your processing unit. You close the brood chamber. You close before you take the deep super to the processing unit. But um, uh, after processing, you get these frames empty, but with the honeycomb still intact, and the, and the honey extracted, but without destroying the, the honeycomb. So you, brood, you bring the empty honey chamber, back to the brood like this so you can uh, uh, you put it back and cover and after the first harvest of six months uh, it may take just two or three months to harvest again we need to maybe know uh, the best time to site our beehives and the best times usually is in the dry season so the dry seasons, there are so many swarms that are moving around. So it's easier to catch the swarms when you sight uh, the hives in the, in the dry season. In the rainy season, uh, there are few uh, swarms moving. And that's why you find uh, most of our farmers harvest in the dry season. So there are so many swarms moving around. So it's easier to sight and get colonies immediately in the dry season as compared to uh, the rainy season. When you are working with the bees, make sure that you have the right materials to protect you from the bee stings. The African bees are very de defensive, especially bees like in Adra in Uganda, they are very defensive. So you really need to protect well. Always make sure that when you are visiting the beehive, you have to dress properly, you have to put on your bee suit the way I've dressed. If you have your hat or cap, you can use it to support your bee veil. A complete bee suit should com comprise of the overall, the bee veil, the hand gloves. These are very important. And apart from that, before opening the beehive, you need also to have your hive tool. 
This is a very important tool that will help you to separate different hive compartments. The bee brush is also very important. Make sure that you use a bee brush to brush off the bees from the comb so that you don't harm them. Another important tool that you cannot work without it is actually the bee smoker. The bee smoker is a very important tool. Make sure that your smoker is working when working with your bees. So I'll just put on my bee veil and then briefly demonstrate how to open and inspect a beehive. So make sure that you zip your bee suit well. We have the velcro tabs. Make sure that you zip it well so that the bees do not gain an entrance into your body. After putting on the bee suit, put on the gloves. Make sure that you have also covered your gun your legs well. You can use the gum boots or angle length shoes if you have. Before opening the beehive, make sure that your smoker is working. Do not allow your smoker to go off when you are working with bees. It will become difficult for you to control the bees at that particular point. So I'm just going to show you how to light the smoker. Scramble some pieces of our newspapers. Light your smoker. Put in some grass. Make sure that your smoker is working. So before opening your beehive, give a few puffs to your bees. Smoke them so that they remain calm. Make sure that you smoke at the entrance and under the cover, like that, very slowly. Do not over smoke your bees, otherwise that will cause suffocation. Wait for a while for the bees to get calm. Then gently, using your hive tool, Lift up your cover very slowly, like that. Put aside. You have opened your hive and there you are now ready to continue inspecting. When carrying out inspection, you have to be very careful. You need to know what you want to check for inside the hive. One of the most important things that you need to check when opening the beehive is the strength of the colony. Make sure that your colony is strong. That means it has more workers, more brood. A colony that is strong will be able to give you lots of honey when it comes to the honey flow season. So always make sure that you know what you are checking for inside the hive. So we'll begin by looking at this hive and see what is happening inside. This is a Kenya toba hive, and it's good when inspecting a Kenya toba hive to begin from a rare side. I mentioned that a hive tool is very important. Use your hive tool gently, lift your bars, put them aside like that, pry another bar, yeah, put it aside. The purpose for doing this is actually you want to create enough working space so that you can be able to separate your top bars easily. If the bees begins becoming a little bit defensive, again, give them a few smoke if it's necessary. Always it's good to work with a partner to help you if you want to move faster. So my colleague Collins is just going to help me so that we try to demonstrate how you can inspect the beehive. That's a newly built comb. The bees are still working on it and 
storing a little bit of nectar. Remember, when you are lifting the comb, make sure that you handle it gently so that it doesn't break. Handle it at an angle, and if you want to turn it, that's how you will turn your comb. Observe the opposite side. It has nectar. It's good to shake the bees so that you can see your comb well. Oh yeah, there you are. This comb contains ripe honey and a few drawn prunes in the middle. Now during inspection, the other important thing that you also in have to check is the presence of the ripe honey. If the honey is ready or if the honey is ripe, it's good to harvest immediately. If you leave your honey in the hive, it will not go bad, but the comb will tend to darken. So if your honey offer stays in the hive, the comb will change the color because of the age and it will tend to darken the color of your honey. Again, remember that in beekeeping, we have different beekeeping seasonal cycles that occurs during the year. There is a season when there is a plenty of incoming resources into the hive. That is the time your bees will be bringing in plenty of nectar and pollen into the hive. We call this season the build-up season. Now, during this season, the bees will tend to increase in population as a result of an increase of the availability of bee forage. Now, the second season that occurs after that is that your bees will begin now making the honey. And you see, this comb has now some good honey, which is ready. That is the honey harvesting season. So when the honey harvesting season comes, check your hive and remove the honey that is ready. When inspecting, remember also to check the brood pattern, how the queen is laying the eggs. When carrying out inspection, you also need to check if your hive is just about to swarm. Swarming is a natural phenomenon which occurs as a result of an increase in population. During this season, the colony will raise more queens. And since the law of the hive is that there should be only one queen in the hive, if another one emerges, then your colony will split into two independent units. If your hive just splits when the honey harvesting season is near, it's a loss to you as a beekeeper because you'll have many young workers in the hive who have not become foragers and therefore you'll not get a lot of honey during that season. So in this hive, the queen is laying the eggs well and it has good brood pattern. Almost all cells are actually filled with the eggs. If you check and you find that the, your queen is getting too old, then as a good beekeeper, you need to replace her immediately so that you can have a strong colony. Then after the honey harvesting season, then comes what you call the death season. This is when the food resources actually reduces. There will be very little incoming resources into the hive. Bees will be bringing in very little nectar and pollen. So always you need to check your hive so that you are able to know or identify the beekeeping season and carry out the appropriate management practices depending on the season. So I'll just Again, mention that important point that in the beekeeping year, there are three different seasonal cycles that occurs. First, the build-up season, 
when there is plenty of incoming resources into the hive, nectar and pollen. So the worker bees, if your colony is strong, the workers will bring in a lot of nectar and pollen. The second season is the honey flow season or the honey harvesting season. This is the time that your bees will make a lot of honey and it normally occurs towards the end of the flowering season. The last season is the dark season, when the food resources now reduces. The bees will begin starving as a result of inadequate bee forage. So it's important for any beekeeper to be able to distinguish those seasons in your area so that you can be able to carry out proper management practices depending on the season. So if you are a beekeeper, again, don't fear working with the bees. When you are used, I told you that I've been working with the bees for about 20 years ago, so you see. So when you are working with the bees, you don't have to fear. I told you that I've been working with the bees and I don't fear about them. After you have returned back your tow bars, make sure that you put on your cover or your lid well before leaving the apiary. So put on the cover well. Then when you are leaving the apiary, you have to be very careful. Always exit the apiary through the bushes and make sure that you brush off the bees so that you don't walk with the bees where people are or where the livestock are. So make sure that you brush off the bees before leaving the apiary. After you have moved away from the apiary, make sure that you move in a safer place before you begin removing your clothes. Check that you don't have bees on your clothes before removing them. Do not move near livestock or other people. Make sure that the place is safe for you and other people. And when about three quarters or 75% of the combs are well covered, then our honey will be ready for harvesting. Remember the other piece of equipment I mentioned was the bee brush. So you can use your bee brush. Always handle your comb well. Do not harvest your honey that is not covered or sealed with beeswax. That honey contains a lot of moisture content or water content. Honey that contains a higher water content will ferment and it's not good to give to your customers. If the honey is ready or if the honey is ripe, it's good to harvest immediately. If you leave your honey in the hive, it will not go bad, but the comb will tend to darken. So if your honey offer stays in the hive, the comb will change the color because of the age and it will tend to darken the color of your honey. So we smoke it around because we want the bees to go back in and eat some honey. By the time they come out, they're a bit full, so they can't fight when they're too full. So we gently open, gently open the cover. Okay, smoke inside. Yeah. So we check, we check the bars to see if there is, there is honey. Open one by one, see, there is more. Open another one, see. So this is um, a comb that is not fully capped, as you can see, but on the other side, is fully capped. This side, you see here, it had started capping, but these are still open. So this means uh, this comb is not ready. Now this is this is fully capped comb. You can see. Okay. So you brush, brush off the bees. See. That you need uh, a very clean bucket with no water. Mm -hmm. 
ini. Oke. Okay. Not good. So. So uh, when you come closer, you can see this is the brood, and you can see this is the honey. So when you change this, this mm -hmm. is the sealed honey, and this is the brood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you don't have to take this out, because there, there is only a little bit of honey, so you leave it for the, for the bee. And close. Yeah. I'll cover. So this is propolis. This black gum you see here. the processing gear um, and this is our harvest from the apiary we have also harvested propolis though we have little uh, so you get your chucking stick make sure it's clean enough then you start chunking so the, the whole process of honey starts here you chunk, you break down the cones. Make sure that they are properly broken down so that the honey will be separated from the cones. This is a simple way of processing honey where you don't have to use uh, expensive honey equipment is a basic way of processing honey. So much of the combs have been broken down, as you can see. So that means uh, we have almost finished chunking our honey. And the next stage will be to leave this honey to settle. It will be separated from the combs. It's usually advisable that you process during the night so that you don't attract so many bees and uh, make sure that after processing like this you clean the stick that has been used for chunking and actually wash it so that it doesn't attract bees by tomorrow morning. Make sure you cover the honey okay. uh, yesterday we we had started our processing so after waiting overnight we are going to scoop off uh, the honeycombs and the honey would have filtered so we are going to see there are two layers there's a layer of the separated honeycombs and the honey so we start by scooping off See. Yeah, you can see now the remaining is is now honey and we have just a few small honeycombs that we'll actually we shall remove when we use our straining cloth. When, when we want to properly filter our honey, you must use the, the nylon cloth. So this nylon cloth helps us to get very clean honey without any small particles. So you put, you put it on a bucket it's also good to use the uh, to use a rubber.
to hold it. So much. Okay. So, so this is a basic way of processing honey without using uh, expensive equipment. So you get the honey and pour it. So you pour it gently so that it goes through the strainer slowly. It will take a while, probably it may take another five hours, this whole bucket, to go through the strainer. So uh, it is advisable, if you see your honey is so thick, you put, you put the bucket outside in the sun so that it loosens. It can easily go through the strainer. In processing, you may not use uh, the buckets to process, but you can buy a honey settling tank that costs between 2.5 to 2.8 million. And this settling tank has uh, a strainer already, so you don't need, uh, you may not necessarily use the, the strainer cloth, nylon cloth, but still to make the, the honey fine, uh, at another level you would need to put the nylon sieve on top of this uh, uh, strainer. So this is what to do. You pour your chunked honey. You pour your chunked honey on the strainer. pouring the, the strainer, the honey will separate through the strainer, it will separate from the combs. Just give it a bit of time. Uh, we are going to look at harvesting honey from the Langstroth hive. And uh, we open the hive after we've smoked. Open our Langstroth hive. And we assume that this slung to hive is ready for harvesting. So uh, though you can see there is no honey, but we assume it has honey. So we brush off the bees, brush off the bees, and we get our, we get our, this is a decapping fork to open the pores here. So what we do, we open, uh, we open from one side, and then we also open from the other side. So that means that uh, uh, the honey can easily flow out when we put in the machine. So we put this, this is our centrifuge extractor. We put our combed honey here. This is a four frame, it carries four frames. So we do the same to this frame, then the fourth frame. Do the same, we open the cups on one side and open the cups on the other side. So we fix it in the extractor. So after that, we are going to manually rotate. So the frames, the honey will be coming out of the frames until when the combs are empty. We stop and then check the combs. If they are not, then change it, change the, the frame, and then rotate again. Keep spinning, spinning, until when all the honey spills out. Then you stop and check. Stop and check. Check the frame. Uh, make sure that all the honey has spilled out of the comb. So you check both ends. Uh, when it's empty, you make sure that it's empty. Then you start putting them back into the deep super. You check, then put back. Yeah, you check the comb. The comb will remain intact, but all the honey will have come out you make sure that there is no honey that has remained in the comb. 
uh, fix back. And then check the last frame. Make sure that uh, all the sides are empty, but the comb remains intact. Let me see. And then so after that, cover. And take back the, the deep super to the field, to the apiary. So our honey is ready, as you can see. Uh, this is now processed and well refined honey. So after, after processing, you give this honey uh, four days to settle before you pack it. So that any small wax that would have gone through the sieve will come on top. You'll have a small whitish layer on top, which you scoop off with a plate, and you'll have your honey ready for packing. So let's see what we have. So this is our final product, as you can see. Well processed honey using the basic uh, materials. So uh, after drying our combs and the honey is all separated, we wash them. We are now in the process of making beeswax. We wash our water so that we eliminate all the honey. Cold water. We use cold water. We use cold water to wash. But this whole process, you need to do it at night, because during the day, it calls for so many bees to come. So it's advisable you do it at night. This is how you wash, you keep, make sure that all the honey is out, so that you can get clean wax cake. Uh, after washing, the water that you get and you can still make honey wine out of it. This water that you, you're using to wash, you just keep the water in, in a closely tight jerry can or bucket for eight months, and you have your honey wine ready. So you can start to squeeze out. So after, after removing the combs, this water is filtered and then uh, stored in a tight container, airtight container, like bucket or jerry can. And that's how you get honey wine after eight months. So you put your dry honey combs in the saucepan. Make sure you have already lit the charcoal stove. So you keep washing your hands as well to attract the bees. So after putting the, the dry combs, you pour some little water and put it on the, uh, on the hot the hot stove cover. Then we wait for it to melt. Uh, when we wait, it, it might start melting after around 10 minutes. So you just have to you just have to keep stir so that all the wax smells. So you can see why we do this at night is because during the day, as you melt the wax, the bees are attracted to the smell of the wax. So our, our wax is almost ready. You can see everything has melted. And this, the honeycombs have actually all melted because we are very selective when we are harvesting. We only harvest ready combs, and these combs, are, we don't harvest all the combs. So uh, one has to take precaution when harvesting. You sort out the good combs are the ones that you harvest. 
that are fully capped. And that's why we have all our honeycombs melted like this, you see? The old combs don't melt. So from this stage, we get a second saucepan, clean it up, so we smear it with soap, put the soap in the saucepan, to allow the wax to come out. Yeah. So we also get our cloth to filter. We have to support it with a rubber band. Wax zone is ready. So we can start to filter. In this mixture, there is also some water. So it will, it will definitely separate from the wax. So you can see, all the wax has gone through the sieve. So, uh, but there is still a little bit of wax. So what we do, we are going to squeeze it out. We've come to the final products that we've got. After processing, wax we have gotten our wax cake you can see and uh, the honey as well so we have two products the wax cake and the honey with the wax you can make candles uh, you can make candles you can make shoe polish it is also used in cosmetics those who are making soap uh, those who are making lotions, lip balm, uh, and uh, for, for us who make hives, we, we also use the wax for baiting. We, we make foundation sheets in the beehives. Yeah, raw propolis is another product that we get from the hive. Usually it's found uh, on, the covers, uh, on the covers of the hive and uh, some holes or openings in the hive. So the bees use it to, to actually to rinse the hive and also to uh, protect other bees from getting disease. So they cleanse each bee that enters the hive. They also use it to, uh, to protect themselves from uh, decay in case something dies in the hive and they don't want it to rot. So they will bury uh, any object that we rot in the hive so that it just decays without rotting, uh, without giving that bad smell, so it will just dry. Um, then for us, uh, propolis, uh, we use it, actually we process it in, in the ethanol. It takes four months, uh, then we get the propolis tincture. Uh, this tincture is a natural antibiotic uh, it would help people who have cough, flu. It would also help for people who have wounds, stomach ulcers, mouth ulcers, and um, people with kidney infections, liver, uh, liver inflammation, and uh, fungal, fungal infections. So propolis tincture is actually gotten from this uh, propolis, uh, raw propolis. After harvesting the honey and other hive products, it's good to process and add value so that they can fetch much more money. Some of the examples of the products that we have, here we have the refined honey. This is a very valuable product to most of the customers and the honey has a very high demand in Uganda and some other parts of the world. The other product that you can also get from the hive is the beeswax. This is very also a very valuable product. It's used in different ways, and one of the ways you can add value to your beeswax is actually making your beeswax candles, like that one. You can also make nice beeswax body cream, which will give you money. All these are products from the hive. I mentioned about the propolis. This resinous substance is obtained by the bees from the flowering plants. It is used in pharmaceutical industries for making quite a range of medicine. So it's very useful in our life. Honey can also be used in different ways. 
you can make juice, you can make wine, you can make medicine. So this juice made from honey and is very delicious. So after getting your honey, refining, you can add value and enjoy getting juice from the honey. Now, last advice, especially to the youth. Beekeeping is very profitable. Don't go in urban areas to look for employment. The employment is in the rural area. The money is in the rural area. Let us use the natural resources that God has given us so that we can be able to improve our, our livelihoods. Lastly, to all listeners, please, when you are beginning any business or enterprise, you need to understand your business well. Plan properly. If you don't plan well, then you are planning to fail. Thank you.